Mainly quiet as we head into the evening and through the night for that matter. We'll have partly to at times mostly clear skies. The latter more likely again out to the west end. Just like last night, patchy fog is also possible in central and eastern portions of Kelowind with lows of the 40s to low 50s. We get a repeat of today, tomorrow. 70s, low to mid 70s at that further to the east, but we try to warm up a bit out west. That's a precursor of what we're talking about as we head toward the weekend. More on that coming up, but until then, first to four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. Working to boost vaccine rates in South Dakota, how health leaders are focusing on information to boost confidence. Tackling the nation's opioid crisis, what the U.S. Attorney General and the DEA are doing to crack down on fentanyl coming up. Then, a little later, voters in Sheldon, Iowa, are going to be taking up a bond vote this fall. A look at the proposal and what it would mean for the high school. Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning in to First and Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. An update on a story we told you about yesterday. Aberdeen police have found the pickup involved in a hit and run on Friday, and they're now talking to a person of interest. The pickup hit two boys who were riding their bikes at the intersection of 6th Avenue Southeast and State Street at about 8.30 Friday night. Officers arrived on scene and, and found two male juveniles that had been struck by a vehicle at that time, uh, one of them with significant injuries um, at, at the scene. And that boy is now out of the hospital, but police say that he has a long road to recovery. They say security camera footage from nearby businesses helped him track down the black Chevy Silverado. We'll have a closer look at the case tonight at 6. South Dakota health care workers have been today to discuss strategies to get more patients vaccinated. A conference in Sioux Falls hosted by the nonprofit, nonprofit organization Immunize South Dakota included South Dakota's Secretary of Health. Melissa Magstat says boosting the public's confidence in vaccinations involves consulting with your health care provider. You know, go talk to your providers, go talk to your nurses, go talk to your community health health nurses and talk to them about your concerns, talk to them about the questions that you have, they're going to be able to answer it. And they're going to be able to answer it accurately. And those are the folks that you can trust. South Dakota has been seeing an overall decline in vaccination rates. We're going to hear from one provider about how she tries to reassure patients about the safety of vaccinations coming up tonight at 5. All right, let's get a check of our weather forecast. Uh, it was sunny early on this morning, Adam, but now the clouds have moved in. Yeah, and unfortunately, it brought a familiar sight uh, to yesterday, and that was a couple of scattered showers moving through portions of southeastern Kelowind. We get live, right to live top where radar, you can see those very light showers just kind of meandering through the area, not amounting to much, but I eh, wouldn't be surprised if you saw a couple of little uh, raindrops now and again if you were out and about over the course of the evening commute but beyond that it's not a terrible end of the afternoon as we get ready to kick off the evening rush 68 there's a view downtown with a look to the northwest a northeast wind at 10 miles per hour yeah a decent bit of cloud cover and again occasionally a couple of those raindrops actually making its way down to ground level but still could be worse could be snow we don't have any of that coming around anytime soon. We're going to continue to just deal with really a whole lot of nothing across much of the area beyond a bit of cloud cover. And again, those very isolated and very light showers to our south and east. It's as low pressure continues to really take its sweet time getting on out of here. Uh, currently situated over the southeastern corner of Iowa going into central Illinois. But there is just enough kickback on those showers to bring it back over into our next of the woods, which is why we're just not quite done with those yet. But we will eventually get there, though. Uh, the key word, of course, being eventually. Temperature-wise, we're doing pretty well for ourselves. We are in uh, the 70s out west, where we have a little more sunshine. Spearfish and Rapid City, both at 75. 65, though, for Pier. 67 as you head into Mobridge. 68 for Huron. 66, Aberdeen and Brookings. 68 here, as we saw in Sioux Falls, as well as in Yankton. 70 up toward the Prairie Coteau in Sisseton. Ortonville following suit at that 70-degree mark as well. 
overnight low temperatures are going to eventually fall back into the 40s and 50s, kind of like what we had seen last night. And we're also going to have to deal with another familiar site, that being patchy fog in several areas. So keep that in mind as you go about the start of your day tomorrow. Speaking of which, we'll see another mix of sun and clouds and highs mainly in the low to mid 70s for southeastern as well as northeastern Kelloland and a nice light breeze that will gradually turn to the southeast as we head through the afternoon. Out west, we get a little more sunshine again and we're a bit warmer. This time mid 70s and a few low to mid 80s popping up. Those 80s move eastward and when they get there, they stick around for a little while. We'll talk about that in your seven day forecast as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. A cruiser back out today in north central Minnesota. It's part of a large scale search underway for evidence in the disappearance of Nevea Kingbird. Kingbird went missing in October of 2021 when she was last seen leaving a party and later leaving a second location. Searchers were also out yesterday. This was the first time the state's missing and murdered indigenous relatives office partnered with law enforcement and loved ones to conduct a search this size. Two people are dead after a car collided with an Amish buggy near Sumner Center, Minnesota. That's southeast of the Rochester area. The sheriff says two others were taken to the hospital with unknown injuries. The crash is under investigation. Last year, just over 100,000 Americans died from drug overdoses, many of them involving synthetic opioids containing fentanyl. Well, today, the U.S. Attorney General announced more funding is on the way to help fight the growing problem. But as Cumberland, Washington, D.C. correspondent Rashad Hudson reports, some say there's still much more that needs to be done. Attorney General Mayor Garland says his department is committed to getting fentanyl off the streets. Agents and prosecutors across the Justice Department and across the country are working tirelessly to prosecute those who flood our communities with deadly drugs. Tuesday, Garland announced the Department of Justice is awarding over $300 million in grant funding focused on enforcement, awareness, and prevention. No one person and no one family can defeat the epidemic alone. He says so far in 2023, the DEA has seized over 55 million fentanyl pills and over 9,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. Violent drug cartels are manufacturing and moving fake pills designed to look exactly like brand name drugs. But Republican lawmakers say the Biden administration isn't doing enough to stop the illegal drugs. The numbers are going up. They went up to 111,000 last year from 109,000. West Virginia Republican Senator Shelley Moore Capito says President Biden needs to be tougher on the Mexican government. We need to put pressure on Mexico to discontinue, to disrupt the cartels, to be able to stop that flow of those chemicals. Capito is also calling on law enforcement to do more to crack down on the illegal drugs. It just has to be literally an all out attack uh, both on the supply side, on the demand side. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson.